Sometimes I wonder, Christians are the most selfish people. We use God for our own purpose. God bless me, my wife, my children. Bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me. That's what we pray every day. That's what we want. I have no time to think about my brother, my neighbor, my sister, those who do not know the Lord. We don't have no time. I pray this morning, change your prayer life. If you're somebody, every time you kneel down, you're talking about yourself, only about your family. You have no concern for the people who are out in the world perishing. Lot was destroyed because of his nature, selfish nature. Give me, give me, give me, it's me, it's me. I want to the first say. He could have thought for a moment, this guy is a old guy. Uncle, you are old, I am young. Already you are 80, 90. Please, you choose first. No, he couldn't do that. I want to have my say first. Let me choose first, then I will send out my uncle. Wrong thinking. Selfishness. If you truly want to be blessed by God, come out of that selfish mold. Amen. Come out of it. Think about so many millions and millions of people who do not know the Lord but dying every day. Reach out to somebody. When will I just stop about praying about myself? Sometimes you go into a self sympathy mood, right? Your power. You go and see yourself in the mirror. <laughs> Poor thing. You know? Self sympathy. Sometimes we go on the road, so look at the beggars. If you were to be that person, will you be singing the same chorus all the time? We are living in a selfish world, my dear friend. Many times we come, we pray, our prayers are most selfish because we don't understand the heart of God. Abraham was not like Lot. Abraham was like a selfless man. He always wanted to give. He will not fight with people. He will not compete with somebody. If you want to take that, go ahead, take that. After the Lord parted, the Bible says that the Lord appeared to Abraham and, I, and he told him, I'm your great reward. I'm your shield. Amen. God wanted to bless Abraham and through him he wanted to bless the entire world. God can never bless a selfish man. Because self consumes everything to itself. If only God had blessed the Lord, I want to tell you. He would have made a real big real estate business and built his empire. God knew when he blesses Abraham, it's going to be a blessing to the entire world. That's why giving in the kingdom of God is very important where you become selfless. God loved the world so he gave his only begotten son so that whomsoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Can I hear an amen? God is the great giver. Here, Solomon did not ask anything for himself. That's the most amazing thing. He said, give me a discerning heart. Give me wisdom, Lord, that I may be able to govern your people. I need the wisdom to govern this nation. I want to be a blessing to the people. Pause for a moment and just think. Do you ever pray to be a blessing to somebody? Some of you may not agree with what I'm saying. It doesn't matter. May, many people don't get saved in the world today because of the selfish Christians. Who can come to church on a 52 Sundays. I want to ask you something. How many years you are a believer? Have you ever led somebody to Christ? What we do inside the four walls of the church, it doesn't matter. But what's happening when you are up in the marketplace? 
or you witness to somebody when it was the last time you cried and prayed for somebody when we get into problem we cry isn't it our prayers become very genuine we do not know how the tears come we do not know how so beautifully the words come when you find right before your eyes somebody is going through pain turmoil agony divorce problem pain it doesn't move your heart when was the last time you knelt down you cried for somebody honestly ask this question before god am i building a wall around myself i try to live in my own kingdom all the time it's me my family only that i cannot go beyond that i want to tell you my dear friend today you and i we hold the bible because many servants of god for the last 2000 years starting from thomas who came down into this nation spilled their blood and died as martyrs william carey brought the first edition of the bible his wife became mad he buried his own son nobody was willing to give the grave graveyard to bury his son he dug the pit by himself when you know how to pray a selfless prayer keeping others in mind god make me a blessing i'm created for somebody I'm, a, I'm an answer to somebody's problem. I told you already about Joseph. He was not valuing self-pity right in the prison. He was just trying to find ways how he can bless others. Self-pity is a bondage. Come out of it. Amen? Do you understand what I'm saying? Self-pity is a bondage. Start focusing on other people. Solomon did not ask anything for himself. Give me the wisdom so that I can be a blessing to the people. And I want to tell you something. God said, I'm going to give you what you did not ask for. Gold, silver, wealth, name, fame. Everything I'm going to add up to you. He did not ask for it. But God came forward to bless him with all these things. God is looking for a selfless man. To bless the world. Amen. And I want to tell you something. Your own problem will never go away. Unless until you start praying for somebody. You decide from today. From today. Your prayer life will change. Your subject will change. Your focus will change in your prayer life. When you kneel down. You are going to pray for this nation. People who perish, people who do not know God, heaven and hell is real. There's no remedy beyond the grave. Jesus spoke about hell more than heaven. It's a real place, my dear friend. Real place. Then God will add up. Other blessings in your life that you never asked for. Amen. Jesus, when he taught, he said, the pagan world runs after three things. What are those things? Food, clothing, shelter. Pagan world. The pagan world runs after all these things. What do you run after? What do you seek after? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All the other things will be added to you. You may say, I have no time. I don't know where you will fit that statement before God. He has given you time even to be alive even today. Even today, you are alive. 
because he has given you time. That's it. Prioritize your life. Keep God first. Pray for other people. Then you will be able to pray the right kind of prayer in your life. Can I hear an amen? amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shall we pray this morning? When you pray for somebody, hallelujah, you will be healed. When you pray for somebody, your family situation will change. When you pray for somebody, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to give a chance to those who say yes. From today, I'm going to pray. Not just a selfish prayer for me and my family alone. I'm going to go beyond that. Hallelujah. Pray for people. I will pray for people. I pray that God will give me the eyes of tears. Hallelujah. A heart that has a burden to really pray for the needy. Hallelujah. I want to spend quality time praying and interceding for people. And people say, pray for me. I want just mouth, empty words saying, I'll pray for you. I'm going to write down their names. I'm going to go back. I'm going to pray. I'm going to cry. I'm going to intercede. I want to tell you, my dear friend, a miracle will happen in your own family. Something will happen in your own life. Something will happen in your children's life. Go beyond your own circle. Hallelujah. Acknowledge me for God and me for God's people. Yes. From today, my prayer life will change. I'm going to pray for somebody. I'm going to pray for others with tears. I live for you, Lord. Come on, lift your hands, those who pray, Lord. Just say yes, Lord. Every moment I'm away. Hallelujah. Lord, have your way. Give me, Lord, I give you my heart. Every moment. 